Let's start with Drake May. Tell us about the biggest questions that are facing the big quarterbacks in this draft. Start with May. Yeah, has he fixed his feet, Greeny? You know, this young man is unbelievably physically talented, but his feet force way too many misses. No quarterback that's going to be taken in the first round under through the deep ball more than Drake May. Bad feet equal bad anticipation. Now, if he's corrected that and worked on it, or at least got on that journey, he's got a chance to be a really high-end player in the NFL. His pro day is tomorrow. If I was going to that, that would be the one thing that I would be focused on paying attention to. For Michael Penix, what an incredible two-year run throwing the football. I mean, he is going to put on a show at his pro day when it comes to his ball placement. The big thing is going to be the medicals. How comfortable are teams when it comes to his injury history, both to his lower half and to his throwing shoulder? If you just take the ability to throw the football and the talent on the tape that he has shown, you sit there and go, man, th this young man is a lock first rounder, but it's going to be about how comfortable you are when it comes to where he stands medically. Jaden Daniels. I'm as big a fan of this guy as anybody going right now. I have said this. As talented as Caleb is, I would take him number one in the draft. I think it's going to be paramount today, outside of how impressive he's going to be throwing the football. What does he look like stature-wise? He's listed at six foot four, 210 pounds. That would be in the Jordan Love, Joe Burrow frame. But I want to see how teams walk away, specifically at the top of the draft, in the comfort and his ability to take some of those shots. Well, I want to focus on him for two reasons. One, his pro day is today. It's coming up, so you'll be able to watch a lot of that coverage here on ESPN. The other is we have Commander Tim with us in the studio, <laughs> lifelong fan. Run of the to the podium, and Legler. Run <laughs> to the podium. <laughs> and, and take Jaden Daniels. Well, so show him tape. Give him reason to be excited. G give, show us some tape on Jaden Daniels and tell everyone why you think he should be, at worst, the second pick in this Calm game. my nerves, Dan. Calm my hey, nerves. The, legs, the word is right. It's the right place with the football, with the right type of throw, and at the right time on a consistent basis. And it's so clinical to watch him constantly repeat that process. Okay, there's two safeties at the ball getting snapped by Auburn defensively. They're going to spin to one safety, so he diagnoses the coverage. Now, the only place to throw this football is that slot receiver. He can't throw him up the numbers because that corner's playing in between. He can't throw him across the middle field because that safety. He's got to place this ball right over the top of those linebackers to that hash. Right place, right time, right type of throw. Beautiful by Jaden Daniels. A little bit later, Mississippi State, he's going to get press man coverage. He's got four verticals, but a stop at the bottom of our screen at 15 yards, okay? Because the coverage, man-to-man, -man, safety in the middle field, the only place to throw the ball is the bottom of our screen. I got to throw it on time because it's man. I got to throw it with the right anticipation and bring that receiver back down where he came from, bring him back down his stem with the type of throw that allows him to catch it, and they'll go make something happen with it. That there's, there's this clinical consistency, this tactical consistency with, consistency with Jaden Daniels' games. game. I, I, I love him. I think he's fantastic as a player. I've said this. I think he reminds me a lot of Joe Burrow coming out of college, mm. and his throwing motion reminds me a lot of C.J. Stroud's coming out last year. And, 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 of course, he comes from the same college as Joe Burrow did. Started as Arizona State, but then went to LSU. So, R.C., you obviously know him as well as anybody. And I think people who didn't see him play regularly are going to learn about him. Sometimes I think we make an assumption. So when good. a player is as dynamic athletically as he is, we assume he's a running quarterback. Mm -hmm. The truth is, he was better from the pocket this year than any of the other quarterbacks in this mm -hmm. draft, R.C., and you saw every snap of it. Yeah, I mean, I think it was – Probably about uh, three weeks ago, I, I went upstairs. I'm at LSU right now doing the show because I'll be at the pro day. But I went to the offensive coaching room, and they had a ton of plays that were on the board. And they were taking me through what the play call meant, like what verbiage was for what position, what was the formation, and then who this was talking to the line. And this was going to be the RPO check or the PRO check the way they had it. And it was so complex. And then they talked about the way that Jaden died diagnosed and dissected things from yeah. the quarterback position and it was absolutely phenomenal first off what Dan does I think we take it for granted sometimes in simplifying what's extremely
extremely difficult. For Jaden to process the way that he is, put the football on the right person in the right position, I think was unlike anyone else did in college football last right. year. But we do get wrapped up in the 250 yards rushing against Florida. We do get wrapped up in what he was able to do with his legs against Alabama. But here is what you have to accept that as, is if things break down, he can be absolutely explosive and dynamic with his legs, but he doesn't need them to break down. He right. doesn't have to break them down on purpose. That if everything plays the way that the coaches draw it up, he can make the simple play. And I think that's what we've seen from some of the best young quarterbacks in the game. And the two names he mentioned, Joe Burrow and C.J. Stroud, can't do the extra things that Jaden can do, but we've seen some of those things from him in the pocket. How does 210 <laughs> hold up you know, when you're taking hits by yeah. some of these linemen, man, moving at that speed? Yeah. That, that's Legs, that's me, been a concern, but you guys yeah. just really quelled my fears. Let, let, me, let me answer that a little bit, Legs. I, I think, and RC can speak to this a little bit too, the difference or one of the main things differently, and you know this going from college NBA, college to the NFL is like you focus on only football that's all you yes. focus on and the ability to add weight and strength train and what's ideal for your body goes to the next level two the re, the rules are set up to make sure that quarterbacks don't get killed now physically and now and this is coming off of a season where a lot of guys missed games I think like because of the new rules and guys don't take shots like they used to he's also 6'4 210 He's not 6'1", 190, you know, yeah. so I, I do think yeah. his frame is is much more structured than, than people are giving yeah, and, it credit. And, Greeny, real quick, you mentioned yeah. that he went to ASU. He signed in the same class as my son, and then yeah. obviously he transferred to LSU. I've watched this young man put in work to be great, and he spoke about this when we sat with him the day after he won the Heisman on the pivot, that last year he basically trained like a pro. He said every time he had a break from school, he was with CJ, he was with Bryce, he worked on eating, he was in the weight room, and so he's shown the ability to put in the necessary requirements to gain the weight, to keep himself healthy, and some of those hits we saw him take in college, he will he not take those in the pros. Right. Yeah, very quickly, let me just get Kmart in here. What is your sense of it? I, we all think Caleb is going to go number yeah. one, and, and yeah. then it gets interesting. It does. I, 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 at this point, I'm not sure, but what I find fascinating is Adam Peters, a guy who came from San Francisco, now the GM of the Commanders, the 49ers who took a Trey Lance. You have Cliff Kingsbury in Washington, a guy who came with Kyler Murray. It'll be fascinating because I can tell you, within front offices, there is, there is always uh, some people who like this guy better. That some people mm -hmm. like that guy better. Same thing happened in San Francisco. So I am fascinated to see. I'm excited to, to cover the commanders. For, for the what it's worth. Because, because you just don't know who actually will win out here. It is kind of a shame the most exciting time of the year is the draft for commanders fans. It'll change. That's it'll been change. a problem here. It'll change recent now. Memory. Don't I'll, worry. Listen, I know this. Nobody's more emotionally <laughs> invested than I am. I will be there, so don't worry about it. Matt Miller, by the way, has a new mock draft out right now, and he has Jaden Daniels going too to Washington, and then Drake May going like, three. Would right. you be shocked if Justin Fields becomes the Steelers' starting quarterback, let's say, by November? Greeny, I would not be shocked. I think by week four, we'll see this kid. If not, some people think he could start week one. I think, honestly, Russell Wilson is in Pittsburgh because of the price tag. I think they've got Justin Fields, a guy who could be their future, and the ceiling. The ceiling is the roof with yeah, Justin Fields. Like, I, I, I'm really excited about seeing him in Pittsburgh. That's exactly right, MJ. The ceiling is the roof. <laughs> but you know who knows it is Mike Tomlin. In case you haven't heard it, this was the legendary coach the other day at the coach's breakfast talking about the potential he sees in the young quarterback. You know, he loses talent and potential. Um, he's worn the responsibility of being a franchise quarterback, but, but still he gets an opportunity to come into a community like situation and learn from a guy that's been doing it for over a decade. Um, man, there's a lot of meat left on that bone, man. I'm just excited about working to be a part of uh, uh, extracting it. All right, so I've been waiting all week to ask my beloved former Steeler, Ryan Clark, his thoughts on that. And I was looking at your notes, so I cheated. Uh, but, but when you hear Mike Tomlin talk about community, you know what that building is. Yeah. What, what, what is it he's talking about and what could it mean to Fields? It's a, it's a different place. What the Roonies have created in Pittsburgh and what Mike Tomlin 
personifies is community, is family. It's one of those buildings where the same lady that's doing insurance is probably helping your family figure out what school to send the kids to. It's a building that fosters brotherhood. It's a building that fosters trust. And I think that's what someone like Justin Fields needs. Himbo was sending me some things, and he was talking about the way Jake Fromm possibly motivated Justin Fields to be what he was at Ohio State. That's going to be something that inside of that building they don't have to deal with. It's not going to be that Russell Wilson is going to have to motivate Justin Fields to be anything. It's that Justin Fields is going to understand what it means when you walk past those six Lombardi trophies, how he's in the place that with a guy like George Pickens on the outside, Najee Harris in the backfield, a tight end like Fryer Muth, what he can be, that he can truly unlock his potential. And he's someone that knows what it's like to feel like you have enough in one building that needs to be unlocked in another building. I actually saw Mike T that day. I was down in Orlando. I was at the owners meetings and the excitement that he has going into this season is unlike excitement I've ever seen from him. It feels like who he was in the offseason headed into 08. He came in and he was like this hard-nosed coach and he wore us down and then he he thought to himself, I can do this a different way. I can relate to these people in this building in a different way and get the most out of him. That's the excitement I see in him when he talks about Justin Fields. And Mm. yes, Russ is the starter now. And I say now in capital letters with exclamation points and some Mm. dot, dot, dots because I believe that'll change. Yeah, I do too. And 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 I don't mine is not my belief in this is not aimed at Russell in any negative way. No. And Dan Orlowski, you know mm. this. I, I am a huge believer in Justin Fields. I just think he has needed the right situation and the right opportunity, and I hope that this is it for him. I think it could wind up working out really well. But I trust your judgment on this more than anyone's. How do you see the quarterback situation in Pittsburgh now, and how do you expect it to play out? Yeah, if Justin Fields is giving a legitimate opportunity to be the starting quarterback, this decision isn't close. It'll be Justin Fields. One, because of now talent, and two, because of future talent. Mm. I have two questions about the whole situation. One, is Justin Fields going to actually be given the real window or opportunity to be the starting quarterback and, and essentially take the job from Russell? And then two... Candidly, I don't really care who the starting quarterback is. They better go get a wide receiver after they Mm -hmm. traded Deontay Johnson because it's not just going to be George Pickens. This is why I say if he's going to be given the opportunity, okay? Um, Russell Wilson is pole position. I don't see Russell doing a lot to give the job away. Russell's going to be fine. He's going to play good enough football. He's not going to give it away. Justin Fields is only going to be given so many opportunities in the preseason to display his talent. Right, like RC, you know about the preseason games. You know, at some points it's you know you're not you're controlled scrimmages essentially. The dynamic playmaking is it going to have the, the like the the opportunity? So uh, it'll be interesting because I I honestly believe this. If it's really a, a a fair opportunity or a true window to compete, I don't think it's close between Justin Fields now and the future in comparison to Russell Wilson. Yeah, and, and, and there's so many – look, there's, everything is finite there, right? They paid nothing for Russell Wilson. Justin Fields doesn't have a contract beyond mm-hmm. this season. Mm-hmm. They do have the 20th pick in the draft, to Dan's point about uh, maybe drafting a receiver. There are a ton of good ones there, so there are still some moves to yeah, make. Finish yeah. it up for I, me, I don't think this is a controversy. I don't think controversy is the right word. I think this is a team last year – where you saw guys dying for the offense to be better. And I think whoever unlocks this offense, whoever this locker room wants to throw them the ball is who will be the quarterback. And when you look at when you look at the contracts too, Justin, you need to know whether this guy could be your future, which is why I think if he's not the starter week one, he will be the starter soon because you need a, a little bit of a runway to see can he be the future. And I think given the opportunity, he might just prove himself to be just that. All right, we'll see.